There's almost nothing about the way our society's systems or attitudes are set up that encourages us or equips us to be homemakers. Quite the opposite. It, it's all pulling us away from homemaking. We are not alone. It's most of us that struggle with, you know, what seems so basic. Hi, I'm Misty Winkler, homeschool mom, and honestly, a slob still in recovery mode. In my new book, Simplified Organization, Learn to Love What Must Be Done, I tell the story of my transformation from someone who chose to not care about the toilets and the mopping and all the things that just seemed to be undone all the time, to someone who not only did the work consistently, but learned to enjoy doing the work. It is possible, not just for me, but for you also. And that caring about the housework does not have to turn into stress or guilt either. A huge part of the transformation for myself was not only learning routines that actually worked for our homeschooling family life, but also it was figuring out how to change my mental approach, my mindset, my attitude about the housework. And I think I'm not the only one who needs that transformation. Am I right? All right. So today I want to share a kickoff call that I did last year when we were starting Sweep and Smile inside Convivial Circle. Sweep and Smile is our most popular course and it's all about finding the routines that work for your particular family and your current situation. But not only that, there is the smile piece of it, where as we work on those routines, we also work on changing our attitudes about the work itself. It's such an important idea to remember. And so I wanted to share this quick clip from last year's call so that you could be encouraged to dig into your work with joy. So grab a basket of laundry to fold while you listen and let's dig in. But a lot of times we come into homemaking, struggle with it and think this was supposed to be easy. I am probably the only one having a hard time with these basic skills of like keeping on top of the dishes and the laundry. You know, what kind of nincompoop am I that I can't seem to do this? <laughs> and it actually, there's almost nothing about the way our society's systems or attitudes are set up that encourages us or equips us to be homemakers. Quite the opposite. It, it's all pulling us away uh, from homemaking. And so we are not alone. It's most of us that struggle with, you know, what seems so basic. And so Sweep and Smell is here with those basics, understanding that it's not just about doing the things and checking the boxes and that will make us good homemakers. That's the sweep part is the work. We do have to do the work. We do have to sweep. We do have to do the dishes. We do have to do the laundry. We should make our beds, do all the things. But it's not really doing all the things merely, alone, that effects the change that we're really longing for, that we really want to see in our lives. That change comes from the smile element. We have to be 
smiling. We have to be appreciating the work and our effect on our homes as we do the work. We have to be enjoying our responsibilities while living them out if we want to experience real traction and momentum. So that's what Sweep and Smile is all about. It is about practicing doing the work and changing our attitude about the work while we do it so that we can become the effective homemakers that we want to be. There is not a quick fix. This is a six week program and we do work at seeing real significant and meaningful progress in those six weeks, but we aren't getting to the level of management, the level of achievement where we're going to cross some boundary line or achieve some status that means we're not going to ever struggle with this again. As you can see in the chat, you know, people who had a routine in place for a while have life change. It happens to all of us, whether it's moving or having a baby or going through some chronic illness. There could be all kinds of things that can throw us off our game. And so our goal must not be to be so on game that we're never, that we think we're never going to fall off our game. Our goal is to examine where we are and take the next step of responsibility where we are doing the things that matter, the things we ought to be doing, having a good attitude about that. And when we get in that practice, we will find that when life falls apart, because it will in different ways, life will fall apart all the way in tiny ways, we'll be thrown off our game. We will, we should just expect that. But we will know how to get back on the game again. We will know what makes the biggest difference and do the most meaningful bare minimum when life is crazy. And then things won't get quite so bad because we aren't putting off doing anything because we can't do it perfectly, right? Because our attitude has been changed about the work. So we keep up with the bare minimum. And also we've spent the time working on it and practicing. And that translates into needing to practice and iterate and try again later. When we fall off the wagon and we have to pick up the pieces, it's like, hey, that's fine. I've picked up these pieces before. I know what to do to pick up the pieces. We're gonna go through this process. I'm gonna think about my five routines, make them small and manageable and build out from there. And that's what we're going to do here in Sweep and Smile. So whether it's your very first time, whether you have absolutely no consistent homemaking routines and everything's in chaos, or whether you're just tweaking and iterating on what's already working right now, or whether you used to have a functioning set of routines and for whatever reason, it's not working anymore and you've got to figure out a new plan. The sweep and smile process is here for you. And we're here for one another, sharing those insights and those experiences too, because we all learn a lot from one another and we kind of get out of our own boxes when we hear the insights of others, when we help encourage others, someone shares their struggle and we encourage them. When we put into words the things that we know, that's also a way of reinforcing them to ourselves. So the back and forth with one another is very helpful for both parties. We need to hear it and we need to say it. So the community gives us a space and a reason to express what we are learning for the benefit of others and also for the benefit of ourselves. What we have to remember as we work through is keeping our routines small. 
it's easy to want to over engineer our routines and want to have a complete system that all the bases are covered, everything happens, you know, you know, like turning the mattresses and dusting the ceiling fans, cleaning out underneath the fridge or on top of the fridge where every single cleaning job that we could ever imagine, that Martha Stewart could ever imagine. I don't know, have you ever, I'm probably at this point dating myself for asking if you've ever seen um, Martha Stewart's cleaning lists. Her magazines that used to come out would have a, a cleaning checklist in, you know, every month. And it was always insane, honestly. It's like those desks are only being done if you have several staff people whose job it is to do things. And those things are not being done. Like, I would, I would think you are pretty on top of it if underneath your refrigerator or your oven was cleaned every like five years, 10 years, like that, that's on top of it. <laughs> because our goal is not to eliminate all dirt from our homes, you know, as if we could. That's not the goal. The goal is to keep our house functioning so that we can effectively function as a family so that people can be nurtured, encouraged, equipped, grown. The point of the home is the people that live there. And it's our job as the homemaker, the home manager, to be sure that the home, the setting, the stage doesn't get in the way of the action, but actually helps facilitate the action. But all of the action is not there to facilitate the perfect house, right? That's getting things backwards. I know when I think back to when I was a young mom, you know, it's like all small kids. I was in my 20s and my, my home management technique tended to be about going all out cleaning the whole house from top to bottom in one go. Um, you know, let my mom have the kids for the day or have them in our fenced backyard in mud or something where they were going to be occupied for quite some time. And, you know, I would just work all day for one day and clean, you know, everything for the most, you know, do a lot of cleaning, make heat, huge amounts of progress, you know, have dramatic befores and afters. And, and that was, I, I enjoyed having the dramatic before and after effect. And that made, that felt to me like it was worth it. All that energy was worth it. But I came to realize too, too much later is that the, the bad part about that pattern is that to have a dramatic before and after, um, things have to get pretty bad to have a great before and after shot, right? And then actually the worse it is before you begin, the less progress you have to actually make that it doesn't have to be quite so clean to make the dramatic difference. And so there's a little bit of in inverse incentive. It's not the right um, kind of approach. It, it did not work well over the long haul. It didn't build in me the right habits, the right kind of character, the right priorities or values. It was just boom and bust and the busts got worse and worse and longer and longer so that the booms didn't quite need to be quite so good to be impressive looking. And um, that's not what we want. So as we work at 
a sweep and smile and building the routines that we want to use to help keep our household functioning smoothly so that the people in it can be built up. We want to be careful not to approach it like we are crafting the perfect, most elaborate, thorough, careful plan that will finally allow us to keep a clean and tidy house with minimal effort from ourselves. It is not the case that routines make life effortless. No matter how good your routine is on paper, it is totally ineffective and a waste of time unless you actually do it. And a bare minimum routine that you accomplish, the, the work that you're actually doing regularly counts way more than a perfect plan on paper. So we want to get that just right balance of thinking things through and being prepared and knowing what is significant in our current situation and just doing the work. Because the real progress happens in doing the work, not in writing out the plan. So I encourage you as we work through Sweep and Smile to channel your energy toward taking action rather than crafting a written plan that feels like it counts. How many... That's what so many of my routines really were, was me trying to think of what the official theoretical principled best routine system was. And if I could just sketch that out really clearly and everything locked into place and fit together, then I would, it would all just suddenly work. And that's not the way it actually happened. None of those theoretical, elaborate, grand plans ever worked out. I could maybe do them for a week and then they just didn't actually work. I I didn't work them, so they didn't work because it turns out they were still a bunch of work and I was trying to avoid work by making the perfect plan. So I look forward to doing Sweep and Smile with you this month into next month. We'll be ready for Thanksgiving at the end of it. And we will be thankful for the routines that we do have in place. We will be kicking off another round of active accountability through Sweep and Smile very soon inside Convivial Circle, including doing another kickoff call like this one. The topic would be different but the encouragement will be all there. So if you need to make over your attitude as well as your actual routines in your house so you can find the core jobs that actually make a difference in your home every day and every week without a lot of busy work or extra stuff that doesn't really have to happen, then you want Sweep and Smile. And when we do active accountability through Sweep and Smile, there is extra chat and encouragement and insights inside our community. There are extra calls. You get an email every week with checklists to work through not only the work that you need to be doing in your particular situation, but also your mindset about that work. If you're interested in joining us, hop on over to simplyconvivial.com slash sweep or go to the link in the description below. We would love to have you join us for the next round of Sweep and Smile inside Convivial Circle. We want to help you learn how to repent, rejoice, repeat, even with the housework.